Welcome to the Kingdom Mindset Channel. This channel is meant to help you escape fear and to win your end time battle. A lot of my videos build off each other, so if you want a better understanding of the content, watch my previous videos in this series. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In addition, leave a comment on the comment bar regarding your opinion of the content. It's called The Proof is in the Text, The Post-Tribulation Rapture. This is video four, four of Wedding Garments. All right. The connection between the seventh trumpet and the marriage and the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelations 19.7, and his wife has made herself ready. Revelations 16.15, and behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk and they see his shame. Matthew 24.13, but he, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Those who endure to the end shall be saved, raptured. Wife makes herself ready for what? For marriage. How? By watching and keeping their garments clean. Matthew 22, 1 through 14. How do we keep our garments clean? By enduring to the end. And when we endure to the end, the result is the marriage and the marriage supper at the end of the great tribulation. All right. Revelations 19, 7, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Revelations 19, 9, And the angel said unto me, Write this, Blessed are those who invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Who gets raptured or married? Question mark. There's a connection between the seventh trump and the marriage and the marriage supper. In the book of Revelations, there's a lot, there's a thing called parallelism, okay? Meaning they say the same thing just in different ways. If you do not see this, you do not, and you do not see the book of Revelations through the lens of the feast of the Lord, you will get confused and come to the wrong conclusion. Period. Okay? So keep your garments clean by enduring to the end. How do we endure to the end? By fearing him. Those who fear him get raptured to the marriage. All right. Revelations 19, 6. Again, and I heard there was a great multitude as the sound of many riders, as the mighty thunderings, and I, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. So who gets raptured? Revelations 19.5. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. The last trumpet, Revelations eleven eighteen, the seventh and last trumpet is the rapture trump, and that you should reward your servants and prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great. Since we concluded that the seventh trump is the rapture trump, these two verses tell us who get raptured, those who fear him, period, those who fear him, all right? So, you'll see in your screen, the, what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord produces hate of sin and evil. Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 1.7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is, is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. There, there's a commentary on Proverbs 8, 13, which you'll see on your screen. It says, hate of evil produces repentance. Matthew Poole's commentary says, the fear of the Lord, which he had before noted at the beginning of, of wisdom in Proverbs 1, 7. So the beginning of the 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 fear of the Lord is the beginning, is the beginning of salvation, is the beginning of wisdom, is the beginning of knowledge, okay? 
is to hate evil. It is consistent in careful abstinence from all sin, and that it not from carnal or prudential motives, but from true dislike and hatred of it. We have to hate our sin. We have to hate our pride. We have to hate anything that is not of God and of his word. Pride, which he mentions first, as he states, is the most hateful to God and most opposite to true wisdom and to, and to the fear of God, which constantly produces humility. So the antithesis of pride is what? Humility. Humility. The evil way, all wicked actions, especially sinful customs and courses, the forward mouth, false doctrines, and bad counsels and deceits. Repenting of sin and hating evil have to do with the end times and the rapture. It actually has everything, everything to do with the end times and the rapture. We have to repent, change the chemicals in our mind, change our false expectations, and humble ourselves so that God can download the right expectations and correct biblical interpretation for us. Like when I say I have an opinion, that is not a sign of weakness in my stance. It's a sign of humility because I might not have it right. For argument's sake, say you or I am 100% right on the end times. If I do not approach the end times with humility, even though I'm right, it will squash me. It will demolish me because the lamb is mentioned over 20 times in the book of Revelations. I think it's closer to 30 times. The lion is mentioned once. And I believe that God is telling us very subtly, you have to approach this book, approach the end times with what? Humility, with dying to self, with asking God, show me your ways. Help me to get through this. Help me to give me right and right perspective. Because I might not have it right. You might not have it right. But even if we are right, we have to pursue it in humility or it will literally squash us. True repentance produces true humility. All right. Psalms 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Let's read that. It says, let's start off on uh, the third little, little paragraph there in Matthew Poole's commentary. It says, a broken and contrite heart, a heart deeply afflicted and grieved for sin, humbled under the sense of God's displeasure and earnestly seeking and willing to accept of reconciliation with God upon any terms. All right. Let's pray that God gives us a humble heart in approaching the end times so that he may change our paradigm and change our attitudes. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, if there's any prideful thing in me, if there's anything that is I'm pursuing this through pride, pursuing the end times in some sort of know-it-all attitude, I ask you, Lou, just to break that down. I ask, Father God, for anybody that's listening to us, God, that you give them the correct interpretation of the Bible, remove all selfish ambition in, in me and in, in anyone else and false expectations so that you can prepare us for persecution, prepare us for trials, tribulations, great tribulations and martyrdom so that we, we may respond biblically to those things. In Jesus' name, amen.